Hi, everyone, and welcome to another installment of Press Pass on Impact's Facebook page. I'm your host, Tom Hannafin. Thank you so much for joining us live, both fans and members of the media from all over the world. There's so many exciting things happening for Impact Wrestling right now. We're still processing what happened this past weekend at Emergence Live in Toronto. Impact on Access TV goes down later on tonight. Victory Road is right around the corner one week from tomorrow. That's Friday, September 8th in White Plains, New York. The next night, we will celebrate our 1,000th episode of Impact Wrestling. It's going to be a historic night. That's Saturday, September 9th in White Plains, New York at the Westchester County Center. You can get your tickets now at impactwrestling.com. And also, there's going to be a huge fan celebration for the 1,000th episode of Impact Wrestling. Absolutely star-studded event. Chance for you to meet some legends of TNA and Impact Wrestling past and present. A quick note for the media before we get going. Some of you are accustomed to this. Some of you might be new. If so, welcome. Uh, please virtually raise your hand so that our uh, administrators can get to you and get your an questions answered as quickly as possible. Hopefully within this one-hour time frame, we get to everybody. Um, all those who plan to be in attendance in White Plains on September 9th to cover Impact 1000, please be sure to reach out as soon as possible to Ross Foreman for media credentials and on-site interviews. So just a little housekeeping there. Right now, without further ado, please welcome Angelina Love, Velvet Sky, the beautiful people. Hi guys. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Thank you for having us, Tom. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I think I'm in for a crazy hour. I'm really excited to see how this goes all together. And again, thank you to all the fans and media that are joining around the world. Uh, before we get going, Angelina and Velvet, we have some breaking news here on Press Pass in regards to the 1000th episode of Impact Wrestling that goes down again on Saturday, September 9th in White Plains, New York. Now, Gail Kim has taken to social media saying that well, if Awesome Kong is going to get back in the ring at the 1,000th episode of Impact Wrestling, that Gail Kim is willing to do the same and has sent out a challenge to any knockouts past or present. We can tell you now that on Impact 1000, Saturday, September 9th in White Plains, New York, we will have a 10 knockouts tag team matchup. Gail Kim and Awesome Kong will be teaming up. Their other teammates will be the current knockouts world champion Trinity, plus Jordan Grace and a mystery partner. That's one team. The other team, Deanna Perrazzo, Giselle Shaw, Savannah Evans, Angelina Love, and a mystery partner to be determined. This is a huge 10 knockouts tag team matchup that's going down at the 1000th episode of Impact Wrestling. Angelina, I'll start with you since you'll be competing within this matchup. How excited are you for this 1000th episode of Impact Wrestling? Oh, I'm beyond excited. You know, Impact was what really put Velvet and I on the map um, and ex exposed us to the world, um, which we're forever, th forever thankful for. And, you know, being two originals from when the Knockouts division started to be a part of the thousandth episode is obviously very near and dear to our hearts. Um, it's been a while since both of us have been in an Impact, in or around an Impact ring. So I think, um, I don't know, I just think it's the best, you know, that was when we were doing the knockouts division back in 08, 09, like that was like the best time of our lives. Uh, you know, we were having a blast. So to be able to kind of bring that back, um, you know, maybe we'll go back to getting the highest rated segments like we did before for that uh, 10 girl match. <laughs> In the words of Mike Tanay, it's the greatest entrance in all of professional wrestling. Uh, Velvet, uh, love to get your thoughts on what this evening means to you, because it's been a little while for both of you, I think about six years since we last saw you guys uh, in Impact Wrestling consistently. Yes, it's it's going to be super excited, like Angelina said, to go home where it all started. I mean, we we have worked our entire career, you know, to get a chance with, you know, to do you know, TV wrestling, that's what we wanted to do. It's what we always wanted to do. Impact, TNA Wrestling at the time, gave us that platform. They gave us the opportunity. You know, um, the powers that be at the time in um, Impact Wrestling, they saw potential in Angelina and I. They gave us the ball. We ran with it as the beautiful people. I feel like it could have never been anyone else besides Angelina and I. You could have tried to have two original OGs be someone else, other two like females or me and someone else or her and someone else. 
the chemistry is what made this tag team as successful as it was. Chemistry is so important. And Angelina and I, and I have always had that naturally and organically. And we are super, super excited to go home where it all started on September 9th. And when she said, maybe we'll pop the rating. No, we're going to pop the rating. <laughs> That's what we do. That's what I we love, do. Baby. Come on. Confidence. <laughs> Just to reiterate the matchup that will go down on the thousandth episode of Impact Wrestling Saturday, September 9th in White Plains, the 10 knockouts tag team matchup, Gail Kim, Awesome Kong, Trinity, Jordan Grace, and a mystery partner versus Deanna Perrazzo, Giselle Shaw, Savannah Evans, Angelina Love, and another mystery partner. I cannot wait for this to get down. Uh, I don't want to wait any longer for the media to get involved. So the first question uh, is going to be from Jim from the Miami Herald. Jim, can you hear us? Yeah, thank you, Tom. Hey, everybody. I just congratulations to all. This is a start coming up. Amazing. I'm curious when you all start doing the beautiful people and it start going and going and going. You guys were highest rated segments on TV. What was that like at that time? Because that was unheard of with women's wrestling. And how was it for you all just to try to keep pushing that to say, hey, look, we're successful here. People are watching us. We want to do more. We want to get in this male dominated society at the time. What was that situation like? That's exactly, personally speaking, that's exactly, you said male dominated society at the time. That's exactly what it still kind of was when the knockouts division was born. Women's wrestling was kind of just starting to come up. And, um, you know, obviously TNA wrestling had no knock or women's division before the knockouts division was born. So it was, uh, it was pretty much male dominated. So for Angelina and I to successfully on a weekly basis to pretty much like pop the highest rating, it meant everything to us because for the first time, I feel like women were really starting to get shown, you know, interest by our viewers at home. And it, it started with the knockouts division. Um, you know, Angelina and I, we are we were so proud to just go out there every week and just do what we love doing. And to us, it didn't feel like work. To us, it just came natural. You know what I mean? We never had to try too hard. We just kind of, we just go out there, we would do our thing. And I feel like that was well received by our audience at home. So you never knew what the beautiful people were going to do each and every week. And I feel like the mystique behind it, like, oh, my God, this is crazy. These girls, what are they going to say next? What are they going to do next? Who are they going to humiliate next? Who are they going to give a makeover to next? Who's going to get the brown paper bag treatment? So to kind of have that interest be shown, like by the masses watching at home, to the point where Angelina and I, the beautiful people, were the highest rated segment in a predominantly male oriented uh, and um, industry was it was like surreal to us it was great yeah I think I think you know the phrase timing and is everything is is a very uh very obvious thing especially in wrestling and you know when we started the knockouts division that was kind of when WWE went like PG and I just I don't think like PG and pro wrestling are like the best mix that's just my opinion so <laughs> I think that we, you know, we were the instant like envelope pushers, <laughs> you know, okay. we gave like that sexy edge that was kind of like coming out of wrestling. And I think by seeing the response and reaction that we got, it was that people still very much wanted to see that <laughs> and they would tune in to see that. So just because like social media wasn't such a big thing, like Twitter and stuff back in like 07, 08, we would you know, we would just be able to find out about the ratings, like on dirt sheets, we would kind of like, I think they would get posted on like dirt sheets. So then we would see, and we were just like, oh my God, like we could, like the, were the highest, like, it, I don't think it was something that ever like fully mentally set in because to us, like, we're just us and we're just doing right. our thing and it's fun and it's easy. You know what I mean? And it was just like, those things are like so large and so overwhelming that to like really kind of sit there and take the minutes just kind of like it's kind of hard to wrap your head around it but like we're forever grateful for you know having those opportunities and we you know we got so many things that like no one can take away from us so it's really cool and one last one for me was there a certain point as you guys were starting and evolving that was like okay now we're here. We hit this out of the park. Was there that moment? Did it start right away or did it have to build up for you too? I feel like it started instantly. Even before um, 
even before we we knew that we were popping the rating for the for the company it just it felt like like it was meant to be with with angelina and i like as soon as we got to tna at the time we like we knew of each other just from doing you know indie shows together um but we got to know each other more and more from being there this is before we were even put together as the beautiful people as soon as her and i like met at at tna we clicked like instantly like instantly we we did everything together there was never one without the other no matter where one was the other was so we had that like natural organic chemistry from the get go when we first signed on with TNA at the time, before we were even put together. And the reason we were put together is because, well, one, we pitched it because we started to see within ourselves, like how, like alike we are. We are alike in every sense of the word. Okay. Like (laughs) two complete strangers pretty much coming together. And it's like a mirror image of each other's personality, everything, humor, everything. So when we were finally put together as the beautiful people, we already had that kind of, I don't know, we just had that organic chemistry built in. So it came, it came natural. It came easy for us where, you know, when um, the rating actually started to pop, I don't feel like it's anything that we were, we weren't trying too hard. And I don't think it came across as forced, you know, like, so like when it started to like really take off for us, we were like, okay, we're definitely on to something here. We have to keep this momentum going. And we, we just, we did, like I said, they gave us the ball and we ran with it. And that's the biggest part of being successful in any aspect of the entertainment industry. When you're given the opportunity, when you're given the spotlight and you're given that chance and the company has all this, this time and energy you know, and trust invested in you, you sink or swim. And we definitely swam and we continue to swim. Yeah. I think, you know, we got, I think the first time that we were put on TV together was like the, the end of 2007. So 2008 was like a very big year for us and the knockouts as a whole. Um, and I think like we, you know, everybody was doing like their own one singular thing. So it was like Gail was her thing. Hong was her thing. We were our thing and everybody was different. So it gave everybody a taste of everything. And it was like, whether just because we had such good characters and we really are both like, we just love talking and cutting promos and being stupid. So like if, (laughs) if for any reason we weren't like the, the girls match on the show that week, you know, we had our thrones in the backstage with our fur rugs and we would be doing segments or we would be paper bagging Christy Hemi backstage or Lauren, the other right. interviewer, you know, and that just kind of, you know, I would say, I, I usually think of like 2009 as like being like the year, but I feel like 2008 was like a massive building year. That was like, that was when we started doing house shows yeah. and doing all the things that we as performers, like when you get to like a TV company, you want to do, you want to do all the things. So I'd say like probably 2008 was when, you know, us together really blew up as a big thing. Well, thank you both for what you did for impact also for women's wrestling. And you mentioned 2009. Oh, oh no. yeah, there it is. Nice. That was such a great year. Man, that's, great that's year. probably that's probably a great DVD. <laughs> yep. Yep. Jim, and thank you lastly, so much. Because I know I took a lot of time. Velvet, good job with commentary. Oh, thank Somewhere you. Else, but thank, thank you all. Thank you all. Pre- Hi, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Uh, just going forward for the sake of time, if we could keep it to one question per member of the media, and please uh, raise your hands virtually, and our team will get with you. Um, up next is Michael from Lucha Libre on. Line. Michael. Tom, Hi. ladies, how are you doing today? Hi. Hi, good. How are you? Oh, good here in Puerto Rico. Thank you for asking. So, this has been a roller coaster, right? In the case of Angelina, if I'm not mistaken, you debuted back in 2000. Velba debuted back in 2003, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, beautiful People Form in 2007. Best year was 2009. That's not a debate. 2023, it's been an interesting year for women's wrestling. And both of you were pioneers of this quote unquote, women's revolution worldwide in the whole wrestling industry. How does it feel that what you constructed way back then, maybe 16 years ago, it's 
basically the things that the new gals are doing today. And at the same time, having the opportunity to inspire thousands of women all around the world doing what you love, which is pro wrestling. It's totally wild. And I don't think it ever won't be wild. Um, because like I said, like we were just two girls, one from Canada, one from Connecticut, who were just like, we love wrestling and we just want to succeed and, you know, just do what we love and go as far with it as we can. So, uh, you know, being originals in the knockouts division, and once again, that timing is everything thing, just being that time, that era that really needed what we were doing we were all able to make history and that's something that nobody can ever take away from us and that's like probably the like the most important most near and dear thing to my heart uh, that i can say with my career and i and i don't think that like it ever will like mentally set in like oh something we did back in the day like a melded a generation today it's like that's like i can't even wrap my head around that so i mean although it may be possible <laughs> it's like it's it's kind of still too wild to absorb um but if we if we did do like we over the years you know velvet and i doing appearances or or shows or autograph signings or whatever you know we've had people that are currently in the business be like oh my god like you're my friend. like i watched you and like i wanted to be just like you and we're we're so thankful for that because we never came into wrestling thinking like oh my god like people are like totally gonna you know whatever yeah. so it's just uh, it's it's very sweet um it means the world to us and uh, like i said the most important thing is that uh, we did it organically and nobody can take that away from us perfect oh. thank you for your time uh velvet what are your thoughts on on that matter as well you inspire a whole division today um so it's actually it's it's very very humbling it really is because like angelina just said like we never walked around none of the knockouts walk ever walked around um thinking you know who we were and especially like when we started to have a taste of success like when when beautiful people was taking off every week okay like whether we were in matches whether we were in our backstage segments and you know we were we were popping the rating we still angelina and i never ever like it never went to our head success never went to our head we, and we could still say that to this day like we were never i can never i can't even remember one moment back then when we were at the peak of our career in impact where we changed where um you know where we we just thought we were better than anyone where we walked around backstage with our noses in the air that never ever went to our heads and you see a lot of that happen in this industry you see a lot of people before they acquire all this success how they're just level-headed and down to earth then they get a little taste of it and their head blows up and it's like what happened to you i'm proud Here. to say that we have always maintained that that humble about us so we have um you know we have attained mega success in our career as the beautiful people and we're still the same the same silly chicks that we were back then before the success that we are today however i will say on the heels of that i will say and this might be the unpopular opinion and that's okay because it's an opinion and it's my opinion i feel like to this day the knockouts division the knockouts division that was born in 07 was I don't want to say solely, I do want to say solely, and I will say solely, responsible for the beginning of the women's revolution. Because before that, like Angelina said, WWE was kind of, you know, I think they were still trying to find the place with their women. They were trying to get out of like the whole brawn panties and pillow and lingerie stuff, which to me was super entertaining. I'm not ever going to say a bad word about it. It was entertaining. They loved doing it. I think at the time the fans loved it, whatever. But when the knockouts division was born in 07, that's when I feel like women's wrestling really started to rise in, in the terms of like people were tuning in every week all over the world to see not just the beautiful people, but what the knockouts division, you know, as a whole was, was bringing to the table. You had someone for everyone in that division. There was someone, everybody was different. You know what I mean? There were no cookie cutter, like everyone looks the same. Everybody wrestles the same. Everybody dresses the same. There were characters, personalities. Everybody looked different. 
they acted different, they talked different, they were different shapes and sizes and heights. And, you know, so there was a flavor for everyone. And I think that's what made the knockouts division back then appeal to the masses. So to be trailblazers um, for, you know, the women that were to come, it's just, it really is humbling and humbling. I hope that's what everyone, you know, takes out of this particular question and not just Velvet said that, uh, you know, that TNA is responsible for the women's, because I like, you know, people like to pick and choose, you know, what words that come out of interviews. And I will say like, humble, humbly speaking, I believe that we were responsible for the beginning of the women's revolution. And I'm sticking with it. Ladies, thank you for your time. Wishing you success on Impact 1000. Okay, and really, you. really looking forward to see you back on TV. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, up next is Lee from Alive Radio. Lee? Hey, Tom, thank you so much for the time. And ladies, Angelina Velvet, uh, it's a great to actually see you guys uh, involved with Impact Wrestling again. Uh, obviously, you mentioned that obviously you and you got together, you pitched the idea of the beautiful people to Impact TNA management back in the day. And the rest, as they pretty much say, is history. But can I ask the question, of how did the other beautiful people come into the concept? Of course, I'm talking about Madison Rain. I'm talking about Lacey Vaughn Eric. And dare I even bring up his name, <laughs> Kip. How did that? You have to mention together? cute Kip. It's not <laughs> oh my God, without cute, cute Kip. Kip. Yeah. We love Kip. Listen, we can start with Kip. So we were, oh my God, so Kip. So DX, okay, the like Billy Gunn, okay? Like the smoking yeah. guns, like grew up watching right. him, the smoking guns. And uh, like, obviously we're both massive DX fans. Like I got into wrestling around like the attitude era time. So when, when we were in impact and they were going to put tip with us, we were just like, like, uh, like, 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 you know, like DX, like, but like, what, like, like, what are you talking about? Like, but we actually were terrified because we didn't like know him like we do now, obviously. So we were like, oh my God, this guy was in the new age outlaws Try and, not to mark out. <laughs> and yeah and d generation x and we're like he's gonna hate us oh my god he's gonna hate us because we're in like this little bitchy girl group and he's like this big massive like successful new age outlaw and we were like he's gonna think it's so lame he's gonna hate us. and like i think we did i think he came out on karen's i think it was karen's angle yeah. the show that she had then and we were just i it was just kind of like a little thing but then once, but then we would like see him in catering and we would like sit and eat with him. And like, he is literally like the male version of us. We are the female version of him. He's a big goof. He's like the nicest person ever. And if you look at the, the, the quick um, way to what he became with cute Kip, like, I mean, he was so into it. He did not care. He was like, I'm gonna get a pink feather boa and I'm gonna tie my shirt up right underneath here. And I got pink shorts with lips and cherries on them and you know we'd be doing our backstage promos and he'd be like sprawled out on the fur rug and like he was just having so much fun with it and we absolutely loved working with him like just loved it it was so fun and the day that that kind of dissipated we were so sad yeah we were so we were so sad um but I remember like when when Madison came in um I don't think we knew that they were gonna add a third person literally until I think Vince called and I think I remember being in my apartment like in Tampa and Vince called and said that they were wanting to add a third girl and he wanted to know what we thought of it and like we didn't have a problem with it um we and... didn't want a third girl we didn't want a third girl at first that's okay we didn't want like anyone else with us because we were not to cut you off but I just I would have forgotten we didn't want anyone yeah. else so, so yeah. So when, when Madison came in, you know, she was just kind of like everybody else that would first come into the locker room, like really quiet, really shy. And, you know, we're all comfortable and ridiculous. And, um, it, it worked, it worked for her, the character and kind of like the spot she was in when she first came in, especially with what we were doing. Cause we were kind of like, we were doing like the my pie sexy thing, like the like the the college hazing type thing, and just her being like just so little and quiet, and we were just what we already were. It really worked to introduce her to the audience, um, and 
yeah. And then she, you know, she became her own uh, singles character. And then I had had a small issue and had to leave. And then Lacey had come in. And then when I came back, it was like me against beautiful people. And then like me and Velvet got back together and all was right with the world again. Yeah. And I feel like with Kip, um, when, when, when we first met Kip, I could tell like Kip has to warm up to people before he'll, he'll show you his true side like his silly humorous like side it's just how he is he's not he's not a mean person by any means but he also has to warm up to you to figure out if he likes you or not and I feel like when we first met Kip or when I first met Kip I didn't know him other than just being like this is this is like the be all end all of the coolest moment of my life right now like you know, like badass Billy Gunn, degeneration at like outlaws, you know, it's like, holy crap, this is like surreal. So I was like super excited to not only meet him when I first stepped foot into Impact back in 07, but like when they told us that he was going to be a part of our group, I was even more elated. And then at, at first, before Kip knew us, he did not like he, I don't seem to he, care for I don't think he much. like I don't think, <laughs> like, I don't think he necessarily cared for us not because we did anything wrong it's because he didn't know us like so he probably thought oh great I have to be with these two friggin bimbos Ugh, oh ugh, what are we gonna do so but like once he like warmed up to us and saw how silly goofy we were and how serious we were about perfecting our, you know our gimmick our craft the beautiful people and just like him being included in the ridiculousness. I think it's our humor that really in the, this, the, the gross, disgusting, silly stuff we would say where he would be an ear's length and he would just like pop huge. He, that's when he really started warming up to us. Cause at first we were excited, but he, it just seemed like, you know, he would be standing there and he'd be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, and I was like, oh no, oh no, no, this, but it didn't take t- like much time at all before, like Angelina said, he's, wearing pink boas and he's like wearing these half shirts and just swiveling his hips and then when Angelina and I would do our entrance through the ropes Kip would be on the ropes upside down with his legs spread in the air he didn't tell us he was going to do that he really just adopted that gimmick you know and made it his own as well and you know there were parts of things that he did that like we had no idea he was going to do until he did it so we're watching him do it with us for the first time and we're trying like so hard not to break character like the legs spread and the ropes was like that was it I, we had no idea he was going to do that so the more like he warmed up to us which it didn't take that long at all the more he really started to come into the character of cute kip and the more he started to get comfortable and have fun with it with us. And the more fun he had, the more fun we had and vice versa. We absolutely, we loved having him as a part of the beautiful people we did. And he was like, almost like after a while, like we were his girls, the, mm. we were his girls. Like, that's what he said. These are my girls, my girls, my girls. He really took us under his wing. He protected us. He gave us advice. He always made sure the matches Angelina and I were in made sense. He looked out for us. He had our back. Like once he was in with us, like he was in, like there was nothing that like we would do where he would not have a say in it to make sure we were comfortable. We were okay with it. It made sense for us you know, like everything, like he took us under his wing as much as we, you know, embraced him. And like, that will forever be a memory etched in uh, Angelina and I's professional career is when we got to the honor and the privilege to work with Billy Gunn. And we're, you know, the three, the three of us are still like that to this day. Cause like, I just saw, I just saw him, uh, two weeks ago at a signing and we still just run up to him like, Kimber! and he gives the biggest hug and the biggest smile and you know and it's just that he's coming to my wedding in a month like you know it's just we're all still like years and years and years later still like this outside the ring which I think is the most important but yeah he was really really helpful to us for sure yeah and as far as Lacey goes I mean she was um at first when she first came into the company I think she rubbed a lot of people the wrong way um me I wasn't one of them. I was kind of just like her humor is larger than life. Her personality is larger than life. 
you're a new person coming into a, a wrestling an already established wrestling, you know, atmosphere with, you know, legends and up and coming wrestlers. So I think she, you know, she doesn't really hold back a lot. So I think her larger than life personality, which she always means well, she never meant harm to anyone. She never meant to inflict any, you know, she never was drama or anything like that. I think she just kind of, when she came into the company, she just came as, as larger in life Lacey. And she wasn't really, really well received at first by a lot of the boys. Um, they didn't take her serious. Her personality, I'm sorry, her humor won me over immediately. So she was almost like, like I, you know, but it, it, it did take a, a bit even for me to warm up to her because it's a whole feeling out process. You know, when someone with that big of a personality and humor comes in, it's like, hold on, I'm trying to read this person. I have to work with this person and we have to make this cohesive. We have to make this work. But let me just try to feel them out first. And like, it didn't take long at all. And then it was like, oh, Lacey, you big goof. Like, we love her. And it was it was really fun working with her as well. She's very, very, very silly humorous girl. And you know what? Hey, she served her purpose. Not everyone cared for her, but she served her purpose and she filled in the role well. It was great to actually watch these all together. It was great back in the day and it's great to be able to go back and watch these moments on Impact Plus. And the ladies, good luck. Can't wait to see Thank what you, you do at Impact 1000. Thank you very much. Yes, Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Appreciate you. Up next, uh, my friend Nikki from Women's Wrestling Talk. Good to see you again, Hi. Nikki. Hi. Hi. Hey, Tom. Hey, Angelina. Hey, Velvet. I'm going to make it really quick. First and foremost, I have to say, Nikki Bougie here. I'm a part of the dominating tag team at Women's Wrestling Talk. We are the salt shakers. A lot of influence has come out of the beautiful people. You guys, first and foremost, still look the same, still look so amazing. So I have to ask, talk about the longevity and the importance it takes to continue to have such a successful women's tag team in such a crazy industry. And if you can, only if you can, can you give us a hint of what this gear is looking like? Because I know y'all care about the look like me. And I'm trying to figure out, are we going old school? We going new school? We doing something new? Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm just... The gear is like my focus. I I, I just. <laughs> I mean, as soon as we took the booking, that was the first thing we got on the phone about was uh, figuring, we figuring out what that outfit was going to be. Um, we're we're going. We're definitely going with what everybody remembers us as. A little edge. And, little and, edge what every, and what everybody remembers us doing is is what you will see. Um, you know, I what's really cool about the just the longevity, like what's given Velvet and I the longevity is the fans um, and just our supporters, which is why we're just we're always just pouring out love for like all of our fans and stuff, yeah. because like just we you know, it's, it's 2023. We started doing this 16 years ago. And for females, especially to have this kind of longevity in the business, to me, that's a really big deal. That really speaks a lot to whatever we did and however that touched the people who loved watching us so much. So, you know, as long as we're in demand, we're going to do stuff and we're going to upkeep because that's just, we just do, <laughs> you know, but we're definitely for the, for the show, um, we're going to give everybody probably exactly what they're going to be expecting from us. <laughs> yeah. And just on the heels of what Angelina just said, um, not to sound cliche or anything, but it really is the fan base. The fan base is what makes, you know, the, the, the character because you, you have this outpouring of support, like she said, like to this day, um, the beautiful people probably, um, I mean, we have some of the most like loyal fans, like ever, like to this day, we still, like if we see people you know, if we see fans or when we see fans out or we'll get emails or we'll get messages on social media, like, you know, you guys were always my favorites. We'll get, you know, they send us old clips. Like I was living for you guys. You guys were my childhood. You got me through my childhood, my teen years. I grew up on you. I wanted to be like you. I wanted to be you. like, it's, it's so very humbling and it's very sweet that we were able to, um, you know, through our, our wrestling work and through our characters, just inspire a whole generation of wrestling fans. And, um, you know, as far as the looks go, it's, it's who, who would say, it? I think JR always says it's a cosmetic industry, meaning you're on TV. So, um, you know, you want to always look your best. You want to always, you know, be presentable and be camera ready, no matter what. 
Angelina and I, we, we did, we grew up um, during the attitude era where, you know, every woman you would see on, on screen would be glitzed and glam to the nine. So that was kind of like our, like when, you know, when we knew we really wanted to be professional wrestlers. I mean, we were at the age, um, you know, where we were being inspired by, you know, the glitz and the glam and the hair and the makeup and the outfits and the glitter, you know, and like just everything. So we kind of just took that with us, like for the ride. And, you know, we're very just, you know, we are, um, we're very, we take pride in our appearance is what we should say. You know what I mean? And I like, even to this day, even like, we're not, you know, we're not on camera with impact, um, you know, like we, like we will be, um, but like, you always just have to be, you always want to be, you shouldn't, I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say should be, you always want to just be camera ready, you know? So like, we've always kind of had that about us and that's never going to go away. So I feel like even when we're 60, 70, 80, like we're still going to be looking good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that is the goal. <laughs> that is the goal. Facts. We wouldn't have had it any other way. Exactly how we were dressing and exactly how we were looking is, <laughs> is what is how we wanted to look. <laughs> We just take pride. That's all it is. We take pride in our appearance. That's all it is. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're like, when you have the name, the beautiful people, you kind of want to try to look the part and maintain that throughout the years. Be over know? the top. Not the haggard people, like the haggard <laughs> people. Oh my God, dude, what happened to them? You know, like, come on. <laughs> oh my God. Nikki, thank you so much for your question. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the support all of you have done with Women's Wrestling Talk. Good luck. I'm hoping to see your team win because the virtuosa, anywhere she goes, I'm there. So good <laughs> luck. You. Thank you for coming and thank you for having me. Y'all have a blessed one. You too. Thank you. Appreciate it, Nikki. Up next is Rochelle, who is representing the first and only women's wrestling website in Italy. This is truly worldwide. Hi. Rochelle, cool. welcome. <laughs> I think that mic, there we go. Rochelle, can you hear us? I believe you're muted. Hmm. We will uh, try and get back to Rochelle here as soon as we can. Uh, having some technical difficulties on her end, as you can imagine, we've got people from literally all over the world. Um, up next is Stephanie from Worldwide Wrestling. I'm here. I'm here. Video. <laughs> I'm so happy. Uh, it's freezing. Oh, oh. hello, ladies. There you are. <laughs> lady talking to ladies. <laughs> Suddenly, Tom will feel very lonely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy to talk to you. It, it reminds me of, of, sorry, so many years ago, and I yes. was watching TNA. We had TNA in France at that time, and it was such a great era, a great moment to, to be there, to watch women wrestling. Wow. Um, but Let's take a look at 2023, at the current Impact roster. Uh, I want your bold opinion on these women that are currently the knockouts of today. Um, in your mind, who would be um, a beautiful people in some way? Who would fit into the beautiful people? Angelina, you want to feel that one first? Mm -hmm. Probably uh, Giselle's group. Right. I feel, I feel like that is, that. that is, yeah, I feel like that's there. That's a, uh, that's a, that's a very safe bet. I like, I mean, I like it. They're, they're, they're heels. They're causing trouble. They look amazing. I mean, that, that would be what I would say. You get to team up with them. Velvet. What do you think? No one. I mean, a lot of sass no, on that no team. One? That's for sure. <laughs> Wait, Velvet, <laughs> Velvet's like no one. <laughs> But, but what about the roster in general? Wait a minute. Let me let, let me like let me finish because when I say no one, I mean Angelina and I are we're, we're the OGs. That's what I mean. Like we're the OGs. We could feud with Giselle's group because it's very similar to how we are now. You know what I mean? I'm having fun with this guys. Like don't take anything like I'm saying as face value. Like oh, Velvet talk shit about. Come on, I'm having fun with it. And 
we're heels. Okay. Beautiful people were heels and we're brutally honest heels too. But like no one, we wouldn't want anyone else in the beautiful people. And I know Angelina feels the same way. It's okay. It's just her and I, but like we could have a very interesting feud with Giselle's group. Like who does it better? Who did it better? Who has the better entrance? Who has the better gear? Who has the better hit? You know what I mean? That would be fun. I think that would be fun to do something like that. That's what I meant by no one. <laughs> I wasn't being mean. I swear. I swear I wasn't being mean. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> but when you look at the roster as it is right now, um, what are your thoughts on these amazing ladies that are now? They are just uh, amazing. The knockouts. They really are. I mean, they're the knockouts division now, I mean, they're absolutely killing it. All of the girls there, it's like they're making it must-see TV. I'm super proud of every girl there that just busts their butt, you know, week in and week out. They show up, you know, they look good, they wrestle good, you know, and um, from what I hear, just, just, you know, from the talks of everything is, it's just that the locker room is a breath of fresh air. As far as like, everybody gets along, it's like a sisterhood. I love to hear that it's still like that because back when the knockouts division was born in 07, that's exactly what we kind of like prided um, the locker room on. Like we didn't want any of that catty crap, you know, because you hear how it was, you know, in WWE with, with the divas at the time and how it, they were all just monsters to one another. We never, ever, the, the knockouts division as a whole back then, we never brought any of that energy amongst ourselves or to new knockouts or girls coming in for a tryout. Even if you were an extra coming in for a tryout, you know, we remember what that's like to have that like, oh gosh, you're walking into a new locker room. This is your one shot to like, you know, show you, you can do it, prove yourself. But mm -hmm. first you have to get through the, the women like, oh my God, are they going to accept me? Are they going to be mean to me? Are they going to kick me out of the locker room? Are they going to throw my stuff out? We were never like that. None of us were ever like that. We were always like, welcome welcome. You can, you know, change with us, put your stuff anywhere you want. Good luck to you. Hope to see you back. So my point is, it's like, I'm, I'm happy to hear that it's still like that in the knockouts division today. And I'm just, I'm super proud of all the girls there. And I'm really looking forward to seeing, um, meeting new faces. Cause there's a lot of girls there that I've never had the pleasure of meeting that I will meet at the thousands of the show. And it'll just be nice, really nice to catch up with the, with the old faces as well. I don't, I don't think there will ever be a time in Impact Wrestling's existence where the knockouts division won't totally rock. Absolutely. Agreed. Steph, thank you so much for your question. Thank you. Really thank you. you. Uh, we are going to attempt to go back to Rochelle here in Italy. Hopefully you got that tech issue figured out. Rochelle, can you hear us? Oh, no. Oh, no. We cannot hear you. I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear us? Yeah. You can hear us. Yeah, we can't. We can't hear you. Turn up. So, try to turn up your volume, honey. Can so, you turn your volume up, Rochelle? Like, Rochelle, I'll tell you what. If you can message your question in the chat, I'll make sure it gets asked to Angelina and Velvet. Right now, we are going to pivot. Uh, we've got Himanshu from Four Eleven Mania uh, with us right now. Hi. Hello, guys. This is Himanshu. I hope you're all having a great day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Well, both of you have uh, been a major part of the knockouts division as the beautiful people. Uh, but at one point of time, there was no women's division in TNA. That all changed at Bound for Glory 2007, when TNA had a gauntlet match to crown the first ever knockouts women's champion. Now, both of you were in that match. So as two women who have been a part of the knockouts division since the very beginning, what was the vision that was laid out to you for both the knockouts division in general and the beautiful people? And who do you think were some of the key people behind the scenes when it comes to the knockouts division at that time? So it was honestly, I to to my knowledge, it was a sink or swim idea. It was like yeah. we got some like because you know they had uh, Miss Jackie there, Gail was there, Tracy was there, um, and then like a whole bunch of us came in at one time, and that's when the division started. So it was like we're gonna try a women's division. If it works, great. If not, we'll pretend it didn't happen. That was pretty much it. You know, that was like Jeff Jarrett was was very high behind that. Vince Russo, Dutch Mantel. I know Gail and Tracy and Jackie really wanted it as well. 
Um, so, and you know, I had just been released from WW developmental like four months prior and I thought my life was over and you know, whatever. Um, so when we got to like go to Atlanta, it was like immediate big time feel, which is what we're all here for. That's what you, that's what you go through developmental and you go through the Indies to get up to scratch and claw up to do is, you know, TV wrestling, big pay-per-views like live on pay-per-view at Sunday at 8 p.m. like WWE did and you know house shows and traveling and you know we're all young and that's what we wanted to do so I just remember like I think the best way to have done that and introduced everybody at one time was doing something like a, a gauntlet or like a battle royal like that it's like every 90 seconds or whatever a new person comes in little explanation little spot you can do a little bit we could get comfortable in a six-sided ring which was different um so that was really fun. And there was a lot of people there and it was like a big deal. We're all nervous. And, you know, it was just like, it was, it was really, really cool to be a part of that. And then I think just because there was just like something for everyone, as far as like a girl on the roster for a wrestling fan and whatever they liked, we, it, they just were letting us know by the ratings that they wanted to watch the women so it was just like hey we're gonna let this swim <laughs> it's taken yeah. off and we're gonna go with it so we're very thankful that you know our our superiors had the the faith in us and also gave us the ball and let us run with it which was what made everything work so well and the cool thing about that too the the bound for glory 07 like which was technically the you know the beginning of the knockouts division is pretty much every girl that they brought in to kind of like try out we all came up together on the independent scene. So when we, and we had no idea ahead of time, like what girls were going to be in Atlanta. We didn't know. We didn't know. No one knew until we got there. And then we get to Atlanta that night and it's like, oh my, you're here, you're here, you're here, you're here. It's like, holy crap, this is awesome. Like girls that like had been like literally starving on the independent scene, just like waiting and hoping and praying for an opportunity you know, to make it, um, on a, on a, a bigger platform of professional wrestling here, we are all in Atlanta together. And it was like such a breath of fresh air to look around and see who they asked to come in. Cause it's like, these are girls that we're working with like tooth and nail side by side every weekend, grinding it on the indie scene. And it was really gruesome back then. I feel like nowadays the indie scene is not as gruesome and it's not as bad. And when I say bad, I mean, like, I shouldn't say bad. Bad is not a good word. Um, it wasn't very giving <laughs> in the sense of really anything. This was before social media. This is before, like, you know, you were hardly getting paid anything if, if gas money at all. So to show up all together and look around, it was like, oh my God, here we are, here we are. We're almost making it together. And then like Angelina said, it was like, you know, we're all thrown into this gauntlet and it, it was like, um, those were the girls that management had called to legitimately try out because they had faith in us for this first, first ever knockouts division. So the pressure was on, but it was kind of taken off of us a little bit, knowing who our peers were, you know, that we were starting with, because we were super friendly with all the girls. We working with the state, these girls every weekend on the Indies. And we're all side by side, just trying so hard, just, just grasping like, and hoping for, for that one opportunity. And that's what, you know, TNA gave us back then. So it was really such a historic and memorable night, not just for me, but for all of the girls that were brought in to start the knockouts division back in 07 at Bound for Glory. Well, speaking of uh, the beautiful people and sp specifically, uh, do you remember what is the genesis of the idea and who came up to you with that idea? And Oh, it was and our idea. Right. It was, it was our idea because Velvet and I had known each other prior to, we had done a couple indies together when I was in developmental, she had come down. And then I think even after I got released, we had done an indie together right before yeah. both of us signing to TNA. So just because everybody was like their own singular character, we just wanted to do something different. And we were, and we just came up with wanting to be a group. We're like, we should be a group or a tag team or something because we're so similar, like in yeah. and out of the ring and we dress the same and we go to the, you know, just crazy with the hair and the makeup and all the TV stuff. So that was our idea as our way of doing something different than what everybody else was. Yeah. And the funny thing about that is um, when we, I mean, management 
the powers that be would see Angelina and I backstage. Like we were finishing each other's sentences on, on the regular. We were, we had that silly we sense. We still do. We would feed each up, feed off of each other, like organically. We would be in catering together. We would change together. We would get our makeup done together. We were always together. And I think like the more like Vince Russo and, you know, the powers that be kind of saw us together, they were like, Ooh, I think there might be something there. So when they, um, we did kind of pitch to be together and we, we wanted our name to be Velvet Love Entertainment. <laughs> I remember that, like we pitched that and um, at first, and I'm not going to say who said this, but one of the powers that be in um, TNA at the time, when we were talking about, this is before TNA really put us together, like actually gave us the ball to run with. Someone there said, like a higher up was like, mm -mm, this is not going to work. This is career suicide. And we were like, okay, okay. That kind of hurt a little bit. Cause it was like, we were like, oh man, like this is what this guy thinks. Like, what the hell? We're like, really, but we're like, eh, that's okay. We'll prove him wrong. We know, we knew it wasn't career suicide. And the funny thing is when like, when they first put us together, we, they put us together as baby faces, which that didn't last long at all. We could come out and do the cheerleader, like we thing, like all day long, kissing babies, slapping hands. But like when we first debuted, we were booed. We were just, we were booed. And I think it's because like, we get this a lot. Like if you don't know us and you, you judge us just from looks alone, you've never had a conversation with us. You've never heard us speak. If you just judge a book by its cover, I think that's what the, the fan base was doing at the time. Cause they didn't know like what we were all about, like right there. They just saw two pretty girls coming together, you know, with hardly any clothes on their hair and their makeup done. And it was like, Oh, Oh, these girls are probably beaches. You know what I mean? Like we, ugh, ugh. so like we tried to come out and do the whole, we you were here. And it was like, Boo, from the get go and management saw that and was like, nah, they got to be heels. And once we came out as heels, that's when the fun really started. And that's when the beautiful people really, really took off. We're much better as heels. And the funny, the greatest thing about that is like, we're so nice in real life. You know, I feel like a lot of times in, 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 you know, wrestling, um, your character is kind of an extension, maybe a little bit of an extension of like how you really are as a person or your personality or your attitude. It is the farthest thing from Angelina and I like ever to be except like, our sarcasm. The, the sense oh, of sarcasm yeah. is is pretty dead on all right. around. Right. Yeah, we're we're, we're a holes with our sarcasm, but it's like you know what we dish it out, but we can take it like just as well as we can dish it out. So beautiful. Yeah, uh, I do want to get to Rochelle's question. She was very very patient. Unfortunately, had yeah. some tech issues. We are going to go a few mm -hmm. extra minutes. I know we yeah. said we we're going to be on here for an hour. We're going to try and get to as many people as we can. So thank you everybody for hopping on. Uh, Rochelle's question that she put in the chat here: Many women's tag teams have clearly taken inspiration from you. Have you ever had the opportunity to give any of today's female tag teams some advice to reach your level of success, Velvet? Um. Well, <clears throat> we. Anytime we do like appearances or if I'm at NWA or like just, just anywhere where, you know, there's, you know, up and coming female wrestlers, if they have, um, a lot of times they'll, they'll have questions for, for Angelina and I, like they'll kind of pick our brains, whether it's, you know, success questions, TV questions, um, char uh, character questions, wrestling questions, just advice, you know, because um, they know what we've kind of excelled in this industry and we have, we're, you know, at the top for so long and, you know, they respect us for, for all of that and just what we've done for women's wrestling and for TNA as a whole. So a lot of times um, it is nice to kind of give back our advice, you know, and what worked for us, but, but what works for us might not necessarily work for, you know, the next girl. So we keep that in mind when they kind of pick our brains and we give them, the most soundest advice that we can because we genuinely want to see every up and coming woman like woman in um this industry succeed because we remember how it was like when we before we were given an opportunity i'll never forget where i came from even before velvet sky i'm still the same person like that i was 
before I even got into wrestling. Nothing's changed me. Nothing shifted my mindset. Success hasn't gone to my head. That's one of the biggest things that for me personally, like that I tell these young up and coming girls, like, listen, just, just don't ever get too big for your britches. Don't ever let the success go to your head because that makes you ugly. And that like radiates outward. We, we, there's one particular person we're not going to speak on it because we're not throwing anyone under the bus here. Angelina knows who I'm, who I'm talking about. Um, you know, where we worked with this said female in general in the past. And um, when we first met her, before any opportunities were given to her, sweetest, humblest, like kindest, most, like happiest girl and had a pretty good career. And we saw like what success did to this person. And it's disheartening because it's like, you know what that person was like before they got a taste of the success and you saw what the success did for their head. And it's just, it's disheartening and it's kind of disappointing because it's like, man, you see that happen right before your eyes. So it's like, you always have to remain level-headed no matter what level you exceed to in life, personally and professionally. That's kind of the advice that I drive home with a lot of the girls that kind of like try to ask me for any kind of advice as far as longevity in, in wrestling. Like, how do you, how do you, um, you know, make your career last like long? And it's like, one of the main things is like, just, just always just stay level-headed, never let your head get too big. We know we haven't, I mean, like, I don't know specifically of any of today's tag teams that we've spoken to. It's mostly just like if we're out at appearances or whatever, and somebody usually just like a singles wrestler um, would have been inspired by our type of character um, and say like, oh, hey, like, you know, like I'm trying to do like this beautiful people type thing. I don't, I don't recall of any actual tag teams, but definitely we've had our share of like just singles wrestlers ask us about the characters and believability and, you know, being that type of heel and, and just that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, up next is Maurice from GP. Maurice. Maurice, are you with us? I don't see a box for Maurice. Mm. Oh, there he is. I do. It looks like he might be muted. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Rochelle. Thanks, Rochelle. Thank you, Rochelle. So sweet, honey. Thank you for your question. Maurice, can you hear us? Maurice is muted. Yeah, we've had a lot of tech issues today. Hmm. Maurice, if you can hear us, you're muted. We can't see you. Uh, I'm we're going we're we're to work on Maurice. <laughs> uh, Jamie from Real Wrestling. Uh, Jamie, if you're on with us, you're up next. That's my name. Um, we're Hi. <laughs> uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can, Jamie. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, sorry, I've been having a few problems with my laptop. Um, first of all, um, I'd like to say thank you so much for having me. Um, it's an absolute honor to speak to you all. Um, my question really is, as a tag team, obviously you've had such amazing success. You've had so many amazing opponents, but who, if you could, who would you choose to have like a big, final match with i'm obviously not suggesting in any way shape or form you guys need to stop um wrestling at all um but who would be your like dream final opponent from any company or indies or whatever just anybody do you mean singles or like as a beautiful people tag team final match oh de definitely as the beautiful people like that's what i love like i adore the beautiful people like i've got my little angelina love just right here Aww, <laughs> oh my look at there, there i am <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, gosh, I don't know, probably the, the, uh, inspiration. Oh, well, I, I love mean, that. That would, that be, would be amazing. I'm biased. That would be I great. completely agree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that would be like, that would be a great, like, and fun match because like, we're like their, their, their characters and our characters are so similar. I feel like we would all just have the time of our lives and we would mesh really well. And we'd laugh a lot too. I know that the, the level of ridiculousness would be through the roof. For <laughs> yeah, that mesh for sure. Also, I just, I like personally speaking, just from, this was like young, young velvet's dream match um, from like way, I mean, 20 years ago, I think it would have been awesome if it could have been Angelina and I versus Trish and Lita. Oh yeah. Yeah. Or, you yeah, know, what? Sure. I, I, and 
I love the Bella twins and I think we'd have fun with the Bellas too. I love them. But I think the Trish and Lita versus Angelina and I, I think that would be like a, that would be fun. Cause I mean, we grew up watching those girls, you know, like Mm -hmm. I drew inspiration from Lita. Like I loved her. I loved everything about her. Um, so I think it would be cool to, to have that be the match. Oh, I couldn't agree more. The pair from <laughs> WWE, the pair from TNA. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Um, we're going to Maurice. Are you with us? Do we have Maurice from Cheap Heat? I think Maurice is still having some issues. Uh, we're going to bounce to uh, Billy from the Scottish Wrestling Network, and it's appropriate because we're going to be in Glasgow, Scotland, on October 26th for the Impact UK Invasion Tour, where Grado and Joe Hendry will be performing that night. So, Billy, welcome. Hi. Tom, thank you for that segue. That was wonderful. Um, so, b- before I get to my question, um, i just got to say, Angelina and I got to see you wrestle in the Highlands of Scotland back in 2015, so I'm... Um, so excited to get a, awesome. to be asking your question. And, yeah, and was stuff fun. <laughs> um, so speaking of the UK, as Tom has mentioned, Impact is coming to Glasgow and and Coventry and and uh, Manchester, bottom head, um, in in October. You've done a couple of UK tours for Impact. You've you've wrestled in the UK mm-hmm. as well. Have you got any particular favourite memories or of moments or matches or anything like that when you've been over in the UK? Wembley Arena. <laughs> Oh my God. Wembley arena was like the the, hands down, like my favorite place um, that we wrestled over there. But I will say the UK as a whole has always been good to us. And I mean like the entire, you know, TNA impact wrestling roster. Anytime we would, we would um, a UK tour was announced when we were active with the knockouts division, everyone in the company would be like begging management. Can I be on the UK tour? Please. Am I on the tour? Am I on the tour? Oh my God. Oh my God. Because it was such a different feel going to the UK to wrestle. You know what I mean? Because like, I feel like the fans over in the UK, um, not that the fans over here in the States didn't appreciate us because they did, but they get to see us all the time, you know? So it's like absence makes the heart grow fonder. So I feel like when we would finally go to the UK, for our, you know, yearly tour, they, the fans over there, they made it so much bigger for us. And it was like, a, it was such a bigger welcome and bigger reception. And just like wrestling in Wembley arena was like pretty much a dream come true for us. So we yeah, loved the- everything about the, sorry, we loved everything about the UK tours, everything. Yeah, it took me about three weeks to get over my first UK tour once I got home, but it (laughs) was like, it's so fun though. I love going to the UK to wrestle. Um, It is, it's like, it's like a whole little different world, but there's like so much love and it's so cozy and it's so fun and it's so easy. And I think, do you remember the haunted hotel in Ireland? It was was like, it was like a (laughs) holiday in express that was like in the middle of nowhere, but it was like a old cat. Yeah, but it was like an old uh, a old castle they made into like a Holiday Inn Express. Okay, okay. And I remember like, we we would always room together, obviously. And we remember hearing that it was haunted and we're, we blew the fuse in our room because, you know, we got the little converters, right? So we had like flat irons and I had like my rollers, like this hair big dryer. like 12 pack of rollers. We had like hair dryers and stuff. And it was just like, pop. And then like the whole room went black and we we're like, oh my God, <laughs> we broke the room. Um, but then- <laughs> There was one time where we were like, everyone was just kind of like partying after a show. I think we had like the balance of the day off the next day. So it was like, it was like me and Velvet, uh, Baba Devon, Samoa Joe, maybe like ODB or something. We went up to like some meeting room on another floor and we were all just like drinking and hanging out. And I remember taking a picture with, I don't know if I had like a real camera or like one of those little disposable ones. And I took a picture of everybody, right? And like on Devon yeah. had an or Devon had an orb like right on his head. And then he had like another one, like over here, like a little one right here, and then like a big one right here. And I was like, oh my God, there's oh, a ghost in freaked, the picture. He freaked, he freaked out. out. When I when I That's developed that and I showed it to him, he was like a scared little child. He stop, like, it, oh, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Oh my Dude. God. He was so freaked out. But that's what I remember. Cause I was like, I think the rumor is true. This hotel might yeah. actually be haunted. 
He was like, stop it. Get that thing away from me. I can't sleep here no more. I got to get out of here. I don't. I can't find anymore. that picture anymore either, man. I've been looking for it. I thought it was buried in my Facebook somewhere. Yeah. I cannot find it, but it does exist. <laughs> Devon will be there at the Thousand yes. Impact episode, yes. so maybe maybe he has it somewhere. Maybe you ask him about it. If you I will. Uh, I, that's my stepdad. I love Devon. You love Devon, right? Yeah. yeah. So um, our final question, and I want to thank everybody from the media that's tuned yes. in for this. Uh, we've thank run you. a little bit over here, and thank you both, Velvet and Angelina, for the extra time. Um, sure. Final question, appropriately, is from Ireland. This is Jerry with the Irish Wrestling Podcast, who I'm told is going to be coming to Impact 1000 in White Plains, New York, all the way from Ireland for September 9th. Hi, Jerry. Hi, guys. Um, Hi. Not com I'm not coming to you from a haunted hotel, so don't worry. <laughs> Good. Great. Uh, uh, just uh, as Tom mentioned, uh, we will be traveling over to New York uh, on a holiday and happen to be at Impact on the same time we're going to be there. But nice. out of the thousand episodes of, of Impact, do you have any favorite moments of your own and maybe some other favorite moments that you may not have been involved in? I, uh, so I'm the worst at the favorites game. Can't ever pick one anything because literally like, you know, I, I love to tell people like, oh, the first time I ever won the knockouts title was like my most favorite match, but I was unconscious, completely concussed live on pay-per-view and unconscious on my feet. And I don't really remember it. Um, but I know I really wanted to feel like that was a really big moment for me, but I had no feeling. Um, but just any time we ever did anything with the beautiful people was my favorite time. Yeah. It was like, that's why, like what we were doing at that time is why you get into wrestling. You know, you work with your friends, you have fun, you are on TV and it's just, everything clicks, everything works. You're doing pay-per-views, you're traveling in the UK, you know, it's just like that just every time we got to do beautiful people stuff was my favorite time for yeah. sure. I agree. Um, I, I do agree with, with, with what Angelina is saying. Um, certain moments though, that I feel like we had the time of our lives in as the beautiful people was when we would do like backstage segments where we're like beating the crap out of one of the knockouts and like, we're forcing them down and we're giving them like the makeover that we would do. Like that was so much fun. Our entrance hands down, like the fa my favorite thing that we would probably ever do. I mean, I feel like an entrance is very important in wrestling because it sets the tone for your match. You know what I mean? Like that is your one time where only you're on camera, the camera's on you, you know, make your impression felt. And we always did that. So I loved our entrance. I loved paper bagging people with Angelina. It was so much fun. We just, our, our characters, like what we got to do as the beautiful people were so much fun. Backstage when we had our thrones, when we would do segments from the thrones, so much fun. We were ridiculous, over the top, silly, goofy, mean, like we got to do all of that. So everything we did, Angelina and I did together as the beautiful people is personally my favorite moment. Love that. Uh, yeah. the knockouts division, women's wrestling would not yeah. be the same without the beautiful people. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to meeting both of you in yes, person same. on September Thank 9th for well. the 1000th episode of Impact Wrestling. Thank you all so much for joining us here. Thank you both for the extra time. Thank uh, you. And everybody tune in tonight for Impact Wrestling on Access TV. Thank you guys so much for all the questions. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Angelina.